Hello everyone. In the next few videos we will be looking at decision trees in a little bit more detail. Uh, decision trees are of course used for classification. In this video we will specifically be looking at given a, de um, a decision tree and um, some training data, what is the best assignment to make to a specific region according to the tree. So let's say we have a training data set like this one where we have two features uh, x1 and x2 and we've got three classes the blue circles the green triangles and the orange squares we can say that each training item is assigned one of um, three labels maybe one two and three where one corresponds to the blue circles um, two corresponds to the orange um, squares and three corresponds to the green triangles. And let's say we've fit a decision tree to this um, data set. In the next video, we will look at exactly how we, we fit the decision tree. And let's say that this tree have separated out the input feature space into four regions like this. So we've got uh, one uh, decision boundary running here, maybe another one running here, and then the last one running here. So the decision tree has separated out the input feature space into four regions. We can maybe call this one R1, this one region 2, this one region 3, and this one region 4. Now let's say we get a test point um, somewhere here. What's the best assignment that we can make to that test point? Is this test point is that from class 1, 2 or 3. So I think you can guess that the right thing to do is to assign that point um, as class 1, in other words a blue circle, because it lands in region 4, right? And in region 4, the, th the class that occurs most often um, is this class, the, the um, blue circle. So how can we formally write down this intuition that we want to assign the test point in a specific region to the class that occurs most often in that um, specific region? So in a region, what we do is we calculate the fraction of points in region Rm from class K. So what we do is we calculate the fraction of points from a region in a region M that comes from class K. Okay, and how we do that is we count the number of points, the number of points in region RM with label K, and then we divide that by the num the total number of points of training points that we have in that region. So we divide by the total number of points in region Rm. Okay, we can write that out a little bit more formally uh, where we say um, we divide by the number of points in region Rm. Okay, and then what we do is we count up the number of times that a training item Xi, which is in that region Rm, we count up how many times we observe label K as a training label. So just a reminder, this is the indicator function. It returns a 1 if the statement inside the curly braces is true. So this will just, this will just return the number of points in region Rm, in region Rm, um, which are assigned the label K. Okay, now in that region, what do we do? We simply predict as the output for that region, the label which will be assigned to that region, we just um, predict the class um, which occurs most often, which has the highest fraction or the highest proportion of points in that region. Okay, so this just says in region M, in region M, run through all the different classes. So consider class one, class two, class three. Look at the proportion for each class and then pick the um, value of k which gives us the highest proportion and that's then the label that's assigned 
to that region. So if we're looking, for example, at region 4 here, then for each of the 1, 2, 3 classes, we calculate um, the fraction of points in that region which was assigned to that class. So in this region, let's just quickly remove the, um, the test point. In this region, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 training points. Okay, And for the blue class, the blue circle class, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 7. Okay, So that's 5 out of 7. For the green one, we've got 1 out of 7. And for the um, orange square, we've got 1 out of 7 as well. So the class with the highest proportion in this region is clearly the blue circle class. And that means that if we get a test point around here, that we will assign that test point to the blue circle class. And in fact, any point landing in this region here, we will assign that to the blue circle class. Similarly, any point in here, we will assign to the orange square class or class number two. Any point here, we will assign to class number three. And then here, we've got a little bit of an uncertainty about which class we will assign it to, but clearly it will either be class three or, um, or class one. So that's if we're given the decision tree and the training data points and we know which regions um, the tree partitions the input space into. In other words, we know the leaf nodes. Then we know which label to assign to each leaf node or to each, um, to each of the regions. Okay, but we haven't spoken about how we actually find these regions. How do we decide how we're going to partition up the input feature space and how are we going to construct our tree? And that's what we'll look at in the next video.